he's liberated from Mauthausen by the American in Austria by the American army on May 5th, 1945. He is more than half dead, more like three quarters dead. He's uh, 19 years old, weighs 98 pounds, has pneumonia, uh, malnutrition, exhaustion, fatigue, uh, etc. It took about two or three months for the American Red Cross to nurse him back to health, at which point uh, he and his best friend from the camp uh, both volunteered for the American counterintelligence to help track, not, help track down Nazi war criminals, which he was very successful in doing. He helped uh, identify and arrest Goebbels' brother, Joseph Goebbels, the, uh, one of Hitler's inner circles was Goebbels, the propaganda minister, and his brother was fingered by my father and arrested by him. Uh, after that, uh, that earned him uh, the affidavit of the, uh, the paperwork that he needed to get to America. He comes to America and makes his first dollar in America shoveling snow. In, one, in the At the time, it was the second bl biggest blizzard in the history of New York. And he went from making a few bucks shoveling snow to working in two different sweatshops. One making bow ties, inhaling toxic fumes in, in horrible conditions that wouldn't even be legal today. Uh, and then another sweatshop, and then he has a, sa a sales job, and then he manufactured, he was selling neckties door to door all over the East Coast. And then he was selling out of the trunk of his car. And then he was selling, uh, then he went into manufacturing uh, change purses, women's change purses for pocketbooks with another refugee. And then he was selling, he was always selling. And then he was selling, uh, and then he was always doubling the sales, tripling the sales, quadrupling the sales. That was his uh, best power, his best uh, talent, uh, and, his, and his best ability responsible for him just uh, making a living and doing well. Sold, sold furniture, sold uh, hospital, uh, I mean, cemetery, uh, gravestones and plaques, always selling. And, uh, and then with what money he was making from the sales commissions, he started investing in the stock market. And at a, a party, he found another uh, uh, a prominent Jew that was also had invested in the same company as him and said, look, how would you like to take over the company with me? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll supply the money, uh, the startup money, and I want you to be to replace the, the existing president and run the company for me. I'm 80 years old. I don't want to have a heart attack like my, bro like my brother did taking over the company, but you're a smart guy. I have confidence that you might be the right guy. So without any more than a grammar school education after having come to school America with only $240 in his pocket he eventually takes over Wilshire Oil Company of Texas a Canadian company operating on the American Stock Exchange and later he, he makes it so successful he brings it over to the New York Stock Exchange then he uses the little oil company to take over a commercial bank called the Trust Company of New Jersey in New Jersey which at the time only had a half a dozen or a dozen branches in Hudson County. And he takes that bank and opens another almost a hundred branches in 13 counties and grows it to being over a $4 billion bank in assets. Now, how does one able to run an oil, an oil and gas drilling company successfully and then a commercial bank successfully? Without, any, without ever having taken even the basic courses in either one of those fields. Any MBA student will be amazed and marvel at, at, at how, it, how it occurred and that it occurred. Um, no one can actually figure it out other than the fact that he was a genius. <laughs> he, he knew people, he knew when to buy something, when to sell something, and he self-taught himself the bond market, the stock market, the bond market, the currency market, the, the uh, account, corporate accounting, corporate taxes, 
oil drilling, uh, estate planning. I mean, he learned so many things on his own, self-taught. But that's why you have to call him a genius. No deny, there's no denying it. He, uh, he just had the uh, an ability, he had the Midas touch. Everything he touched turned to gold. If you listen to Siggy, you made money. He may have been, it may have been a, tough to listen to him because half the time he was screaming at them and calling them a schmuck. <laughs> so, and, uh, but once they did listen to him, they realized that uh, this man uh, went through a lot, knows a lot, and I should probably take his advice. And he became an advisor to families that were feuding because everything he did was from the heart. Even his strictness was because he loved his children and wife fanatically and lived for them. He wasn't a womanizer. He wasn't a gambler. He wasn't a jet setter. Everything he did was for his wife and children. And so we all felt an obligation for him. Any man who slaves day and night and is a workaholic and is doing it for us to have great lives after he's not around, instead of himself, we have to like appreciate that and show the appreciation. And the appreciation I showed and my siblings and mother later was to initiate uh, and make this book happen. Unstoppable, Siggy B. Wilson's astonishing journey from Auschwitz survivor and penniless immigrant to Wall Street legend. No man on the planet, no survivor ever came here with no money, and no education, took over two public companies, an oil and drilling company and a, and a commercial bank, traditionally two of the most anti-Semitic businesses in American history. And still very anti-Semitic at the time he took them over in the 60s and early 70s. So it's just, uh, you have to shake your head and no one, well, the, the amazing thing is that no one ever begrudged him for his success. Blue collar people from every working people, working class people loved him because he achieved which, which they all hope to achieve. Every immigrant in America hopes to achieve what my father did. And they know that he, he, he grew the bank. He didn't rob the bank. He did it, he did it legitimately. He did it the hard way, the old fashioned way. He earned it. He worked his ass off, if I can say that word, <laughs> uh, in order to get what he got and to accomplish what he accomplished and to be honored by so many organiza charitable organizations and to have met four presidents of the United States in his lifetime because of him being so successful and so knowledgeable and so energetic and such a great person.